what's at stake, though, for the Liberal government, the economies, the, the two countries, they are so closely intertwined that tonight's results, as Evan said, will obviously in influence key elements of Canada's financial health. So we've called in BNN Bloomberg's Amanda Lang to help put it all in perspective. And Amanda, first of all, interpret the markets for us today going into tonight's um, vote and possible change at the top if the polls play out. I think it's safe to say, and we're seeing it play out in the futures market, which gives you an indication of what happens tomorrow, that certainty is the friend of investors. So we've seen the markets kind of settled into, into a positive state of mind because it became clear that there might be a clear winner. And in this case, the polls are pointing to a Biden win uh, and even potentially, of course, a Democratic uh, majority in the Senate. Uh, the uncertainty factor, though, is still evident because uh, stock markets don't like a lack of knowledge. And we really, as you know, don't know when we'll know for certain for one thing and what it might mean uh, in terms of how the results sh shake out. So watch the markets in the next few days. It could be a bumpy ride. For people that play this day to day, it's definitely been a volatile period. Mm -hmm. Has it ever? And Trump, as recently as today, said that he has created the greatest economy in the history of the world. Before I ask you the question, though, we're just going to show everyone that, again, not a surprise. Uh, Joe Biden has won Vermont. That's three electoral college votes. Uh, Hillary Clinton won that handily in 2016. Bernie Sanders country there, so uh, not a surprise. Uh, but, okay, so, uh, Amanda, back to the question of the mm -hmm. hyperbole that has, um, you know, really been a part of the last four years. On the issue of the economy, Put it in perspective for us. This, this is an important question because for most incumbents, the economy is the single biggest factor. If things are going okay and you're the incumbent, you have a good shot at re-election, as we know. And when Donald Trump says he was the best for the economy, he created more jobs, the data actually does back it up, right? GDP growth was strong throughout his presidency. Unemployment hit record lows. The stock market did hit new highs during his presidency. Now, the, the counterpoint to that, which you'll hear from Democrats, is all of that began before he began, became president. And in fact, if you want to get a really fine point on it, some of it can be laid as the groundwork in, back in 2009 uh, from the bill passed by Barack Obama and Joe Biden with his vice president that reinvested in the American economy to get it going again. All that stimulative work that has still been working its way through the economy, plus central bank easy money making borrowing cheap. All of that's benefited Donald Trump, but he can point to good data points. The thing that catches him, of course, as you know, Lisa, is COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It threw everything off the rails, which is why COVID then becomes the kind of debate point. How did you manage that? And then the uncertainty factor is what would have happened to the economy if you'd managed it differently? Absolutely. We cannot forget the reality and the pain uh, for, on both sides of the border, mm -hmm. the lives lost and the impact on the economy of the coronavirus. All right, Amanda, we'll check back with you. So many levels to this economic relationship between the two countries, and we have lots of time to discuss it. But 